having us here today. We're really excited at Ladies Fund to showcase some incredible, in fact, five incredible women leaders who are some of the best across not only Pakistan, but representing Pakistan globally. We're going to be filling this space with such incredible women, but we'll begin right now first with um, the incredible Dr. Nusuf Khan. You come join us. Sure. Big round of applause. This is Pakistan's first oceanographer and female. Thank you so much, Dr. Nusuf Khan, for being here. And uh, Roxana Asghar, please come and join us as well. And as we begin, first and foremost, by saying that cervical cancer is such an important topic and one that hasn't yet got the awareness that this conference and other initiatives will ensure. And even by today's event, we don't know how many lives will be saved. So we thank uh, the organizers for the invitation, as well as thank each of you for being a part of this. We also have our next panelist, Seema Tahir Khan, the owner of TV1 and News1. Please join us here. <laughs> We'll begin with these introductions. So first, first will Dr. Nusuf introduce yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Dr. Nusuf Khan. Uh, I'm basically an oceanographer. I've been the director general of the National Institute of Oceanography. Uh, most people they normally ask me why is it ocean? What was the passion joining ocean? Very honestly, when I joined an organization, I had no clue about the ocean, not at all. Uh, but I always uh, dream for doing something different and innovative, which normally we are not doing in our, in our routine practices. So uh, luckily I joined National Institute of Oceanography as a research officer, and Trust Us Sky is the head of the organization. Let's keep discussing why this program is good. Thank you so much, Dr. Nusset. This incredible woman is a trailblazer in blue economy. We also have Roxana Asghar, who we just mentioned, who is the CEO of Fulcrum Consulting, our nation's largest HR consulting company with 20,000 employees. Another incredible woman leader, Roxana. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm Roxana Asghar, and uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Fulcrum Private Limited, uh, a company I started about 18 years ago. But previously, I've spent my career in human resources, starting uh, from Unilever, where I was with them for seven years, then moving to Citibank, launching the entire consumer business, and I was their director of HR for eight out of the 12 years that I was with them. After that, I joined UBF as the SEVP and global head of HR after privatization, so a lot of transitioning there. It's this institution, which is the Karachi University, is uh, like home for me because I did my BA Honours International Relations from this very place and my LLB. Presently, we have a company which works with over 400 clients. We have 20,000 employees outsourced across 300 locations in Pakistan. We are also working globally as uh, promoters for uh, human uh, resource migrants to various countries. So that's another avenue. And IT and digitization is something that is also come into existence at Fulcrum. Thank you so much, Rosanna. And now, although she needs no introduction, the iconic Seema Tahir Khan is definitely someone who is going to fascinate us all with her story and introduction. Thank you so much, Seema, for being here. <coughs> Thank you, Uzra, for always remembering me, for inviting me. Although today's subject is, uh, I am absolutely, uh, I have no knowledge on the subject of uh, uh, cervical cancer, but I'm here because if there is an opportunity to put in a word uh, as a media person and as a communications person, I think, I thank God for having these opportunities anywhere, wherever I can, to raise a bit of awareness, to call for action, to identify the needs, to lay emphasis on the urgency, uh, 
uh, whether it is women's health, it is any particular kind of cancer, particularly breast cancer, and <coughs> other forms of cancer which are which have become very rampant in Pakistan. And as a media owner, I have used my screens several times and many times over to address issues on health or social issues or uh, create awareness during a particular time on subjects which are affecting society, which are affecting the nation and where people should be uh, aware and they should be with our efforts, with media, with public, with students, with women uh, entrepreneurs, with women environmentalists, with women at the top of men competent and sensitive to the issues besides the government. I feel there must, people, all of us, wherever we are, we must come together for some integrated approaches. So I'm here as a owner of three television channels and my past experience has been in advertising, media and communications. So I'm here to be part of this, uh, this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sima Sahaba. So once we we'll begin this process, it's important to explain why we're here and what this session is about. So Ladies Fund's been asked to do three sessions at this important, important conference, and in fact, this global milestone for Pakistan and the topic of cervical cancer. This first session is on women leaders. They have been invited here, and as mentioned, not one of them is an expert on cervical cancer, and in fact, none of them are an expert on cancer. They have been invited here specifically as women leaders to brainstorm and talk about community, talk about stakeholders, and especially stakeholder engagement. Someone like Roxana, who has 20,000 employees, has a huge responsibility as well to engage those employees with, who are stakeholders with awareness. Similarly, Nusuf has a completely different pool of people in the environment in her network, and Seema Sahaba with her television and media reach is phenomenal. So the main reason they're here is to look at ways for engagement and stakeholder engagement. As said on the opening keynote of this session, there has been government free testing and free vaccines for COVID. Now, should the government decide to do free cervical cancer screening, we need to discuss and see here these stakeholders who have huge pools of bodies of people, and women in particular, are in a position to engage. Would they partner with that? Would they get their stakeholders to come and attend these screenings to be screened? And what other ways can they be involved? So we'll begin with Roxana. What ideas, it's a brainstorming mm -hmm. session, what ideas do you have that you could engage both your community of people you know, you have 20,000 employees, but you have even more clients. Yeah. And so how would you engage them in this awareness to help this cause? Thanks, Carla. Actually, um, if we were to have some kind of uh, screening uh, arranged, what we do is we provide people to various organizations in which we have factories, in which we have uh, uh, banks, companies, so there's a mix. Even in all these factories, we have a lot of females working. So there is a major possibility that if we were to have some sort of a program, we could talk to the concerned um, you know, owners and we could, uh, we could have a day at the factory or a day at the bank or a day at whichever organization uh, you know, which would want to do this because if there's, there's something, from what I saw, the statistics, it's a huge number that uh, goes through this cancer every year, uh, which for me was again eye-opening because that's not something I'd ever seen before. So I, I personally feel that yes, uh, awareness is uh, a major responsibility because half the time it is the unawareness that you know kills the people rather than knowing what to do and how to get through with that particular disease. So uh, there, is a, there is a possibility that we could arrange uh, some kind of uh, awareness sessions at various institutions and organizations that are, you know, that we are a part of. So that I could definitely help with. Thank you so much, Roxana. Seema Sahaba, if you could talk a little bit about how, if you were to think of ways to engage stakeholders, as it is such an important topic, but it's a very 
lesser spoken about topic. People know breast cancer, they know prostate cancer, but cervical cancer is lesser known. How would someone go out engaging, especially since people are watching live all over the world? How can Pakistan make a dent in this topic? Uh, as I said, in everything, whatever we do, we need to have an integrated approach for, in order for it to be successful. Now, engagement on a particular form of cancer, uh, first I would like to know from those, the policy makers and the stakeholders, perhaps hospitals, big hospitals, are, we, are they finding, uh, do they have a repository? Do they have enough data on cervical cancer and the incidence of this cancer and the increase in this cancer? So when you know, when you have current contemporary data on this, you would know the scale and you would know uh, if the, of the urgency and you would know of the framework that you need to set up for it in order and then step by step, phase wise, how do you address it? You'd have to have that data in front of you first. Uh, creating awareness on such subjects, uh, that a lot of this happens through, uh, through groundwork. Uh, electronic media or social media, social media I think is a much bigger force, although limited, uh, limited access and limited use of social media is done by the uh, by the, uh, the the expert and the intellectual and the policy maker and the stakeholder for instance if big hospitals could take up uh, make a let's say a social a digital uh, setup where they have constant information and this I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about uh, generals. Say the, the, the cancer wards of every hospital put up a Facebook or a website on, ca on the incidence of this kind of cancer and information, technical plus valid information. And where to go in such cases, who to approach and what are the so it would be detection of the cancer through uh, data collected. It would be addressing the issue through hospital resource available, and then the remedial and the awareness about how to prevent this, how to detect the signs of uh, early detection. So those things can be done through media, through electronic media, through uh, properly structured campaigns. But this needs to have the, all the people interested or involved or engaged or committed to uh, eliminating or reducing the impact of this kind of cancer, whether it is breast cancer, or it is throat cancer, or it is lung cancer, we do not have enough repositories, we do not have enough data, we do not have the infrastructure in place to handle it on a national level. We do need assistance from wherever it comes to address this and then we need to have a structured framework which can be replicated, cascaded across all hospitals and that framework should contain the three heads from understanding uh, the kind of cancer it is to the effective uh, uh, mitigation or reduction of the cases and then the early detection and warning. So, it has to be a very uh, well worked out and maybe doctors of uh, cervical cancer and specialists in cancer get together and have, they do have conferences and seminars, but when conferences take place and international doctors come in and they read their papers and there is uh, uh, those papers, the information is summarized and catalogued it is there for you, it should be then in a central repository which can be used by all hospitals, all practitioners, all clinics. So I think that's about what I can say right now.
So absolutely insightful. Each of us can continue to talk about awareness, particularly with the media giant, giant like Sina Sahaba here, but the reality is, unless the stakeholders have the data and are engaging with complete alignment, there will be no possibility of true awareness and knowledge taking place. So thank you for that insight. Before we ask Dr. Nusuf to share her insight from the environmental sector, we'll have two more introductions. We have the incredible Saida Ladari first, who owns one of the largest bottling plants in Pakistan. Saida, if you could kindly introduce yourself and share your story for a few minutes. Thank you. and I'm uh, sorry I got a bit late, but I didn't realize how large Karachi University is and uh, got lost. Uh, tried my best to get here on time. Um, next, uh, really, I'm not a doctor, and I'm sure you people are all science students and have a better understanding of uh, cancer is, um, and its uh, implications in our society today. But if I'm sitting here, I want to say that, yes, uh, I have been associated with NICH, um, as uh, a social work segment of my life. Uh, my main work is that I run a Pepsi bottling plant in Sakhar. So, if you ask me to ask my mindset, then more than cancer, it's probably flood. Okay, because I think I'm living and breathing the flood. But uh, I'm the CEO of my company, and that's another journey, and that would be a uh, discussion uh, on a business forum, which would probably be my forte. But uh, since we are sitting here right now uh, discussing uh, cancer and cervical cancer, all I can say is that in the last uh, 20 years of being associated with National Institute of Child Health, I've seen it grow. I've seen uh, Dr. Nizam wanting to put up a very small children's cancer unit that I was a part of from the beginning. Uswat, we didn't even get 40 or 50 children, right? And it caters Pura Sin and Balochistan. This is before Shokat Khanam came up. And I was very clearly, that should we be doing cancer and spending so much money on cancer, or should we be treating cholera and diarrhea, etc.? But Looking at the large influx of cancer in children today, I think it was very forward thinking of Dr. Nizam and uh, his team to put up this center. Uh, there is a outpatient of 500 people, uh, children a day. That's huge, okay? And, um, and in, over the years, the one thing that we have uh, also collected on data is that food, as we know today, has a huge, huge impact on cancer. Uh, another huge impact on cancer um, is, of course, genetics. So this is the data that we have collected. And I would like to share the rest. We all read a lot about it. But this is the data that, uh, and then again, um, I'm not sure what the other panelists have actually spoken about, but data collection to actually figure out the cancer that is predominant in Pakistan is very, very, very important. And um, from the uh, business aspect and from life, the one thing that I have understood is that every thing is ki hai. So, you know, you're sitting in a university over here, you have a science department, you probably have an IT department. I think you should take all of them on board. Another uh, aspect of generalized uh, cancer conversation or uh, thoughts on uh, cancer, if when I said food, it's a, it's a very big, large topic in today's world. Uh, food. And the one thing that the largest universities in America and across the globe have said is that we must uh, not consume too much pesticide, etc. And, and what does that lead us to? It leads us to saying 
that we should be eating local produce. Because anything that's imported into your country cannot be organic. It just cannot. It has to have a certain shelf life. So it has to be sprayed with certain pesticides, which again, or unorganic food, which again could be the cause of cancer. So my, my um, I know that we all have short durations. So um, what I was trying to say is, we must collect data. We must know the kinds of cancers that are predominant and what are the root causes of those cancers and how to eliminate those. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saina. Before we have Ella, Saba introduce herself. It's incredibly an honor for the Ladies Fund Women Leaders to be here today. As you know, we've been invited specifically as people who are lay people when it comes to cancer in a room full of some of the best academics in the world and some of the most scientific minds on cancer who've flown in from different countries to discuss cervical cancer. But these women leaders are here to represent not only the best of women of Pakistan, but the women who are representing Pakistan globally. And their main role right now is to discuss how they, as leaders with lots of employees and who are engaged with huge communities, whether through having 20,000 employees and, and different um, clients to having huge media access or to having a bottling plant or having the environmental foray under their whole network. Now we are going to have Hina introduce herself, who's a partner, one of the first female partners in Pakistan's history of a big four, a big four audit firm. And is going to both introduce herself, and then later we'll come back with some brainstorming on ways that they can get engagement to their communities to help the academics and brilliant minds here and around the world who are watching understand how to get stakeholder engagement and more awareness. Hina, welcome. Uh, Thank you very much for having me here. Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon to all. Um, when Tara invited me for this session, uh, I, I was lost because uh, I, I have no uh, association with science. Um, I am an, um, an accountant, an auditor. And what can I say to people who uh, are in this journey? But cancer as, as a disease is very, very personal to me. Uh, my mother uh, had breast cancer and she uh, passed away a couple of years ago because of it. Um, I don't know how much I can contribute to this panel, but yes, as far as uh, creating awareness is concerned, um, I, I do have certain personal anecdotes to share, which I think uh, may serve as, as sort of torch bearers for the people who are the victims. Like I would consider myself being a family of a cancer survivor, um, uh, somebody who's been through the process, and how the doctors and how the, the system can help us along the way uh, in, in creating that awareness, in, in being more kind and more understanding of the plight of those patients. Uh, I think I, that is what I perceived could be my role on this panel. And then I'm going to ask, listen to all the other learned ladies over years so that even I get to know because that journey was very, very personal to me. Uh, that's all I would be saying right now. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Hina. Now, Dr. Nusa, you are, of course, Pakistan's first ever female oceanographer. And you have the entire blue economy as well as huge environmental reach in Pakistan and globally. Can you share ideas on ways that you think environment could, environmentalists and climate control as well as health could maybe overlap or there could be any synergies for awareness building? Thank you, Dara. Uh, my introduction was just a brief before. But let me introduce you more and then I'll answer your question. I basically ocean. Ocean means connect. And I consider myself as an ocean. I'm basically a connecting model. This is a unique thing which I carry. Number two, what I have a unique thing, just to be in that forum, this is very relevant, but very relevant to me. Uh, I consider I belong to a different planet, this different areas like ocean. What is unique is some, doing something different and innovative all the time. So I am just hosting one of the uh, program in uh, Tara's studio. And one very unique thing I 
we get along the day before yesterday. No, yesterday. 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 There was a doctor, and she had a mobile application for assessing uh, some of the diseases. So similarly, uh, we may develop a good kind of uh, mobile application with uh, some symptoms or something in maybe in a local language. So anybody could put these um, uh, information and data and the symptoms so we can have a data. We have been discussing about the data, lack of data and coordination. The mobile is in everybody's hand. This is, the, this is the best way to collect that data. This is my humble suggestion for all these uh, student teachers, professors, and the panelists as well. We may start in advocacy and collecting the data by that way. Another very unique thing which I am trying to introduce in Pakistan Presently, I am working as a CEO of Dynamic Medical Company. What we are trying to do that, we are trying to introduce an artificial intelligence equipment which is reading and reading up and diagnosis uh, 35 different diseases, including tumor in human body. So this is the way uh, we are trying collecting a cloud uh, going to be associated with that. So we may incorporate that application or maybe that, because I am not, medical doctor, I have no clue about the cervical cancer, but I can uh, be a connecting body, as like an ocean. Is somebody doing that kind of research and uh, looking for outreach the while we are uh, try to introduce our equipment, we may introduce your application as well with that. So we can work together uh, with our uh, medical dynamic uh, association. Thank you for much. Very, very useful. Obviously, Seema Sahaba said earlier about engaging with the hospitals and data collection before getting the media involved, because you need to have that knowledge. Adding mobile applications uh, is very, very powerful there. Uh, Saida, would you think that, um, obviously, you model Pepsi, and Pepsi is drunk by very large numbers of Pakistanis. In fact, it's one of the largest beverages drunk in our nation. Is there any way you think a platform like that could be aligned in any way with an awareness building campaign? Okay, thank you. Now, this is probably, this question is probably uh, a question I can answer better. So, yes, um, uh, Pepsi is 70% of uh, Pakistan's beverage market share. And um, as we can see, that uh, globally, uh, Pepsi is working very, very strongly towards PEP Plus, which is taking away from the CSD, which is a carbonated soft drink, which we all know as Pepsi or the other flavors, towards NCBs, which are non-carbonated and healthier products. So we don't have too many of them in Pakistan, but we do have Aquafina, which is probably one of your best qualities in um, bottled water right now. They have moved towards uh, juice slice. Um, they are moving, uh, and they have moved towards um, a, a big segment has moved towards um, diet drinks. And even in the diet drinks, they're trying to use more natural sugars um, and you know uh, be more aware of the health quotient than they were a few years ago. And across the globe, of course, they have now joined hands with Lipton and other products like that. Is so, um, uh, and there are lots of water flavors, vitamin waters. Um, there, there is a large segment that PepsiCo has moved towards. Uh, we still haven't introduced that in Pakistan, but we are aware that healthier products need to get into the market. We are slowly trying to introduce those. And would they be able to align with a campaign like this? Okay, again, we are bottlers, um, so um, that has to be that has to come from the multinational company. Um, no, we are the manufacturers the as well. We're the, the, bot the Pepsi, PepsiCo International. That, that's what it is. Yeah. So PepsiCo International um, is very strongly aligned towards a healthier product. Um, it's um, always a slow process because um, people need to align themselves into wanting to drink um, 
the healthier version of the product, right? So global awareness is a lot more, and I think we spoke about awareness, and that sort of awareness needs to be created in Pakistan, and um, and I think it's a, it, it will come. Um, just in our sales, we can see the move and the shift towards um, hydration, which Aquafina falls in, um, juice products, um, uh, diet products, people are aware of the sugar that they're intaking. So we can see the numbers in our sales crop up in these segments, which were very low segments maybe a few years ago. So yes, we are going to, and globally there's been a huge shift, I must say. So um, slow and steady, there's of course um, other environmental issues, like I said, uh, apart from cancer, and cancer is very related to other environmental issues also. You know, it, it is what we live, eat, breathe. That is the cause, you know. Cigarettes were once tooted as a cause, and we moved away, but it's been a slow process. Uh, Food is going to be a process. It's all about a mindset. It's about awareness. And I hope that um, seminars like this, TV channels, um, and you know, heads of TV channels, if they are so um, inclined towards this, will help create this awareness. Thank you so much, Saida. So we've seen from mobile app, engaging with communities, the potential of an environmental global campaign that can align with food, diet, cancer, so forth. We have uh, Hina here who's joined us representing the big four and a huge audit firm that not only has several female employees but also clients. And those clients are huge companies that have enormous number of female employees as well. Hina, do you think there's ways to promote awareness in those communities? So as we, one of the questions we asked earlier was if the government were to introduce free cervical cancer testing would you be able to, through your platform, or any audit platform, engage more people to go and be tested? Thank you. Um, Tara, that's a very pertinent question. Uh, I not only represent a big four audit firm uh, with a lot of female employees, I'm also a member of ICAP, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, which actually has a women's committee. And we have these awareness programs being held in Karachi, Lahore, and Islamabad for at least chartered accountant females. Uh, we've had uh, uh, awareness sessions related to, uh, to breast cancer, uh, for diabetes, uh, obesity, all these problems that plague the working woman. Uh, sadly speaking, cervical cancer as a cancer has not been uh, uh, has not the the the, the, cre the the awareness has not been created per se. Uh, I also believe that while yes, we should be starting from the educated sector. Uh, a lot of uh, someone was speaking about the mobile app. A lot of Pakistanis now have access to smartphones, and they have access to uh, 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 Google and relevant search engines. The, the need is to create awareness on first that there should be certain bodies because I know for a fact that a lot of bodies are working for awareness of breast cancer and there are programs being designed and conducted in various companies, firms, even in uh, places like ICAP. Uh, there are awareness sessions held where they uh, teach you what symptoms to look for and then uh, you have to understand that we women just don't represent ourselves or the people we work with. Uh, we have access to a larger community per se. As a homemaker, I have maids working for me who have no clue about what cancer is or what are the symptoms that they should be looking for. But because they are house health, they normally when they have something, they, they feel something is wrong with them, they normally come up to you and ask, you know, we are going through this thing, uh, what is it? We are their first point of contact. And if we are more aware of the symptoms, we can guide them accordingly. I also believe that there is a need, as you mentioned, free uh, 
cervical testing, uh, cancer testing. Um, I'm not even, uh, I think first we need to develop those communities like uh, for breast cancer there's pink ribbon. There are other communities also who are working towards uh, creating these in uh, awareness programs. Um, and I've, I've been to several of those. Uh, but I've yet to attend, a, uh, other than this, a cervical cancer awareness uh, session. I think more awareness sessions are required where probably the people who are attending are just normal people like us who, have, who are not connected to the disease per se. But we, once we are aware of the symptoms, we can guide people. A lot of uh, women who are homemakers have small online businesses where they engage the local artisans in in um, uh, in areas in downtrodden areas and they make their product and then they sell it uh, a lot of these women look up to people like us as role models and they would come up to us and ask us hey you know we're going through this thing what should we do now so that awareness always helps uh, i know for a fact that because i've been through this journey if anyone comes up to me and asks me okay, uh, they have a, 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 an indentation in their breast, I know whom to take them to, which hospital to recommend, what is the treatment, what is the route, and also create awareness in the men because those are the support system, the women we are talking about, especially in the rural areas, in the low income areas, look to their men for decision making, for understanding. And uh, I met a cancer survivor. Uh, she told me that her entire family had abandoned her because they thought that this was some form of, you know, curse or something of that sort. I think awareness needs to take place on that level also. That the greatest thing that the cancer patient needs is support from their loved ones. Because while um, a lot of cancers are symptom free per se, not that big symptoms, but the journey towards the cure is actually the more arduous one. The chemos and the radiation and the surgery with cervical cancer, probably the loss of uh, female reproductive organs, how that is perceived in our society as from, from a woman's perspective. And then um, if those are younger girls, then their prospects of marriage and all those. So basically what we're looking at is a, is a huge project of awareness creation in people for this, not only the symptoms, the testing, but if someone is diagnosed with this disease, how to take them through the process. The support that the community needs to give them, their loved ones want, have to give them for them to pass through the journey and to realize that being cancer free is actually more important than being able to bear children. That kind of awareness or that message needs, I think needs to go across. Thank you so much, Hannah. You really summed up so much of the insight we need to discuss in this platform right now. Uh, as in the introduction to myself as a moderator, they mentioned that ladies fund in addition to national awards for women, in addition to women leaders, we also have 12,000 women artisans. And now many women up here uh, who are working with in the rural area, particularly due to flood relief. And their needs are extremely different. And also they're very vulnerable because they do turn specifically to men as the decision makers across the board in those areas. And the men are marginally, in some cases, more educated, if not more highly educated than the women, so they turn to them for every decision. And the comfort level of conversations is important. Also, as some of you are aware, I lost my father just a few weeks ago to prostate cancer. And we are a very educated family, and he was an on and off survivor for 17 years. And yet we were so ignorant. And every step of the process, especially towards end of life, and in the case of cervical cancer, hopefully extremely high survival by quick detection. But each of the decisions you need to make 
we made so many mistakes out of pure ignorance just because we didn't know who to turn each step of the way, particularly as he became more vulnerable. And so being vulnerable with your health, with your body, is even across economic lines, across uh, socioeconomic lines in every which way, because some things you don't know who to ask or how to ask. So with awareness campaigns, yes, there's data which hospitals to go to or what signs are, but if the topic is still taboo, no one may even feel safe enough to pick up the phone and call, even if they have some signs. So I found that really, I'm sure all of us found that greatly insightful, and particularly the importance of engaging men. Roxana, you of course have 20,000 employees, and you have so many clients. How would you, as the top HR firm in this nation, think that that kind of awareness can affect even rural areas? I know you're primarily urban, but if you have any ideas, it would be brilliant. I think, Tana, as uh, Dr. Nusrat also mentioned, the social media in this day and age has uh, really taken its roots more with the uneducated than the educated. Uh, at least that's how I feel. And if we could use that medium to uh, make people more aware, to let them know what, how to go about it, if they thought something was wrong with them, where to go, um, you know, who to ask, all those kinds of things would really help if we had some kind of, you know, websites or, or some applications or, or some form, you know, which could be far reaching. Uh, because how many ever people we may know or we may interact with, it's a huge population in Pakistan. And so, uh, like, I mean, I was fascinated by the presentation I saw because I didn't realize that this is also something which is now so prevalent or, you know, is, is there and one needs to be aware it can be treated if you know about it at the right time and, you know, you take the right precaution. So I honestly feel that uh, a lot can be done on this front and we should start with, uh, with the rural areas more than the urban because here you still have some awareness. But if the rural, rural areas and people out there, especially females, who may not even talk about it for a long time, even if they know that they have the issues, they may not come up with it. So if we were to give them some kind of you know, information, I think that would, that would really help. We, we, did, we do see ads where they're saying there is a free doctor available now if you want to you know, approach. So something of that kind needs to happen in these areas to make people more aware, to make people, uh, you know, uh, not take this as a taboo, but take it as an issue that can be treated and, you know, you can take it further from there. As a further question, there's HR policies in every corporate throughout Pakistan. You know, there's even a sin policy that 5% of all companies need to employ women, for example. What kind of HR policies, and you're also part of the SHRM forum and so forth, what policies can be introduced or you would think could be brainstormed to be introduced to bring awareness as well as maybe make mandatory testing? Or I, I mean, that might be too bold, but what would you, what would you think would be an idea? Well, at the end of the day, everything boils down to what kind of financials are involved, you know, for any company. Now, all companies in Pakistan have to give uh, general life insurance as a must, that's a must, you, are, you can't get out of that. But if we could make something like the health insurance also, you know, a part of uh, the mandatory uh, requirement, that could help in a lot of ways as well. But when you come to expense, I mean, that's where people want to get away from this, because no one wants to keep on putting in money how much ever the companies are making, this is not something that uh, just comes naturally to most of the people. So I do feel that you can put in awareness and you can put in clauses, but it depends on the kind of money involved in all of this. To, to make it, you know, uh, uh, more uh, useful, more uh, cascaded, uh, more ingrained, it, it would depend on the kind of financials that are involved. But yes, you could make like this kind of a test mandatory once a year, or, you know, whatever, like mammograms after a certain year, age, are necessary. So something like that could be done, but I think a lot has to happen on this particular cancer front before you know you can tell people that this is something that's on the rise or is there, needs to be treated and needs to be taken head on. Uh, could I add something, Nana? Sure. Uh, I agree with the, the expense pitch and pitch and everything. I think we need to break down this problem into smaller subsets. 
First of all, I think we need to speak more about this cancer. Previously, I know my mother uh, contracted cancer when it was diagnosed in 2003, and she was a survivor for about 16 years. Uh, but at, when she was diagnosed, there was no conversation around that cancer. I still remember the first doctor we visited, uh, he just entered the room and he said, uh, uh, does anyone else in your family, but by then the cancer was not diagnosed per se, she would just gotten seen the tumor. And then he comes in and he says, uh, has anyone in your family had cancer? And uh, my mother was just shocked and taken aback and you know, she never wanted to go back to that doctor. Um, the, the, again, uh, I said, uh, first we need to probably uh, create awareness of the existence of this cancer and then talk about it and then take the whole process through the, the testing bit and the symptoms bit. Um, I see now that 20 years from then, there is a lot of awareness going on around breast cancer, uh, the success stories that are there, uh, how much people are actually, their lives have changed after getting themselves treated, the women's lives that have changed and evolved, the taboo against losing uh, uh, what is perceived as a beautiful part of their body uh, to be able to you know, get over that trauma. I think the same needs to happen for cervical cancer also. That you need to have those conversations and you need to talk to them even in urban areas and then uh, going to the lower middle class urban areas and the rural areas. Thank you so much. As uh, many of you know that Ladies Fund has an annual breast cancer awareness event every year and last year we even gave 200 free mammograms. As Hina was just pointing out, that even if we gave free map, uh, free cervical cancer tests, would people even know what that is or feel comfortable to, to accept that test and, and to go have it done? It's, um, yes, Roxana is absolutely right. Finances are important, but even if we gave them out for free, whether the government arranged it or Ladies Fund did it, would the women take up that opportunity? Now we're Nearing the close of our session, we have about 10 minutes left, so we wanted to use this time for a final uh, two-minute sentence uh, statement on the part of each panelist. So we'll begin with Saida, and each person will speak one by one their closing statement, anything they want to add. Keeping in mind, we'll end in uh, 10 minutes, so two minutes each, please. Saida? Firstly, Uzra, thank you for having us, and thank you for initiating this um, awareness program. I'm sure there have been uh, many such programs. Uh, I think awareness is the first step. Acknowledgement awareness is the first step to any um, subject that we would like to cater in, uh, uh, you know, going forward. And the point is that, um, yes, everybody has tons of opinions, so do we, but cancer is a very, very expensive diagnosis. It's a very, very expensive treatment. All over the world, um, the best insurance companies do not incorporate cancer diagnosis in their insurance, you know. Um, uh, I've um, heard my um, esteemed panelists here. And yes, uh, as a company, I, on a personal initiative, um, have given each one of my employees, um, not just life insurance, but complete health coverage, complete health coverage. But even then, that is the complete health coverage, which is the top of the line one from the best companies, does not incorporate diagnosis. It does not incorporate outpatient. So that I would like to clarify. Yes. Okay? That's very um, uh, Fact. And, it, and really, it's not just over here. Globally, it doesn't. So there are many, very, many issues to tackle. Um, just on a very, very um, small personal front, and Tara, I might take that one extra minute. Everybody has had a personal something to share. So I have to say that my entire family, nobody has died of any other ailment but cancer. So three years ago, when my youngest sister got it, because cancer has different divisions, if you get old age cancer, it is not genetic, but if your family members 
start to get cancer. At a young age, it could be genetic. So um, we all had to test, and we all tested. And all my siblings, including me, are all BRCA2 positive. Now, BRCA2 is a cancer test. There are several, several uh, tests. That doesn't mean I have cancer, God forbid. But like the doctor in England put it, he goes, it's not if you get cancer, it's when you get cancer. Now, technically, for someone like me, I'm aware how uh, the all the pitfalls of cancer. Um, I have tested positive. I should fall into a certain educated bracket, hopefully. Um, even then, there is, you know, apart from testing and being aware of any signs, there's very little you can do. So um, uh, we all must keep the awareness part uh, as the as the main important part, and I cannot stress more on food because that's what I've seen through my family through the years, and that is the only thing that I think I can do for myself sitting here as a bracket two positive individual um, is be very aware of the food I eat. You know, and there are so many diets and so many things. So we should start promoting the right uh, intake and quality of food. Thank you so much. Um, now we're down to six minutes left. Seema Sahaba, you can just give a quick. Okay, quickly. Uh, there were two or three, three things said, so I want to talk about that. First, uh, you talked about uh, financing. So financing as uh, an insurance or as a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, giving from uh, the company or organization. Other than that, the CSR budgets that most companies have. Most multinationals have CSR budgets, and uh, uh, those CSR budgets are normally used to uh, identify a, a cause, and uh, money is spent over creating the communication, which is then spread across media, social and electronic, and ground activities. So the activations, the, uh, the media event, the, uh, the uh, talk shows or whatever. For instance, polio has been doing that in Pakistan, and it has come as a budget to the, uh, for, for the entire media, how it's called a sensitizing of uh, an issue is taken up through a strategy. So again, cervical cancer, because it is a taboo or sensitive uh, kind of cancer. There has been a lot of awareness created for breast cancer. Therefore, even the president's wife has become a champion of the cause. And lots of organizations, the Ladies Fund has done uh, awareness programs because once the sensitization has uh, impacted people, then there are donors, there are uh, organizers, there are people who are willing to host and uh, s spread the awareness. So I'm glad uh, that you've done it this time and this should continue. Other than that, where my personal uh, contribution is concerned, you talked about uh, you know, creating awareness, not through conferences and seminars and webinars and uh, through electronic media talk shows, because once you talk about electronic media or media per se, leaving uh, social media, media is all about, it's a commercial venture. Television is all about, especially satellite television, is an expensive business. So this thing can be taken up voluntarily by, uh, by my organization. What I would do is create a narrative around the issue. That crea creating that narrative can be in any form. It can be a ground uh, activity like a, a concert or XYZ, or it can be about a drama, or it can be about a series of talk shows. So while Nuzat sits here, she is uh, hosting a program for me which is called Wake Up Pakistan, where we've taken every sector of the society and we are talking at length. We do webinars with international experts coming in and we do that, I, I sort of 
It's recorded once, but it's run at least three times so that there's enough uh, information uh, spread. Now I'll hand it to you. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, because the time is just all run out. Uh, me, uh, like you said, I always look for the solutions. For me, from this forum, we have to promise, I'm sorry, Dr. Sayed Khan said, I'm wrong. Dr. Asher. Dr. Asher. What we can do right now from here, try and share a com uh, awareness message. And we all have different groups, WhatsApp group, billion of groups we belong to. We start not from tomorrow, for today, not investing a penny on. And similarly, uh, uh, you can create a think tank, and we, you may count us on that. So this is the easiest way we, we can do the awareness session. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes. And thank you, Tana, for having us here. And uh, I think this was a great session, and something that we were not aware of, even at our levels. So since we have become aware, and as Dr. Nusra said, I think we could start working on this from today as far as the awareness is concerned. And once we are aware, as Dr. Newman <coughs> said, this is treatable. So that sort of gives you a lot of encouragement that if this is a cancer which is treatable, then maybe we should start earlier than later. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay. I think everything has been spoken, so I would not take much of the time. But if there are people, representatives of the government over here in any form, uh, I know for a fact that October is now called Pinktober. We can have certain initiatives coming from the government, creating awareness months, branding a month against the cervical cancer, where uh, NGOs and organizations are encouraged to host awareness programs. That could be one of my suggestions. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. And thank you especially to the panelists for taking the time out and for the organizers for inviting Ladies Fund and the Women Leaders. As uh, brightly suggested by Dr. Nusit, we are this panel has been Facebook Live. We will also have hashtags like hashtag LF cervical cervical cancer and hashtag awareness and hashtag saving lives. So and hashtag ladies fun and of course for the organization hashtag IPVS. So if anyone would like to forward it, share it, know that this is available for you, and that's the way awareness can begin this minute. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. This is part of the